In this video, we continue our look at the fundamental theorem of finite abelian groups by looking at invariant factors and elementary divisors. So, remember, for a finite abelian group, at least one which is positive, we know that we can decompose our group as a direct product of cyclic groups of orders m1 through mk, where mk divides mk minus 1 and so forth, and everything divides m1, and we can assume that mk is greater than 1. And furthermore, we know that these uh, integers here are actually unique. So we gave a name to these. We called these integers here the invariant factors. And in this video, I want to show you a different decomposition of the group where instead of writing down these numbers m1 through mk, which divide each other, we're actually going to break those up as products of primes. And the last video where we showed that CP or CMN is isomorphic to CM cross CN when M and N are relatively prime, allows us to break up these numbers in terms of their prime factors. And correspondingly, we can break up these cyclic groups in terms of the prime factors of these MIs. So in fact, what we know is if we took, for instance, just one of these cyclic groups, CM1, we could take M1 and decompose it as a product of primes. And by the result we proved in the last video, we would know we could then break up CM1 as C, well, the first prime to whatever power it is, cross C, second prime to whatever power that is, cross dot dot dot, C, whatever the biggest prime power is. So we could rewrite this as C, and I'm just going to say there's, say, R of these primes, we'll call them P1 through PR, and there's some exponent. All right, those primes show up a certain number of times. And these primes actually may not be distinct. For instance, uh, you may have a C2 that shows up here and another C2 that shows up down the road. You're not allowed to combine those. C2 cross T, C2 is not the same as C4. So these may not be distinct primes that show up. But every time a prime does show up within one of these, we can ask how many times it does, and that's where you get these exponents. And so the numbers that you get here P1 to the A1 through PR to the AR. Those are again going to be unique because the M1 through MK were. And we give them a different name. These are called the elementary divisors of G. So this gives us a second way of decomposing our group as a product of primes. It's again going to be a unique uh, way of doing it and we get these numerical invariants that we can attach to the group. So I want to give you an example here. We're going to start with some group and the order of the group is going to be say 432,000. Right? That's the uh, number of seconds in five days. Right? So in fact I know this is 60 times 60 times 24 times 5, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, and there's your 5 days. Alright, and well, maybe we know in fact that G is isomorphic to C60 cross C60 cross C24 cross C5. So, do these numbers 60, 60, 24, and 5 represent invariant factors or elementary divisors? Think about that for a moment. Hmm. Yeah, there's no primes here other than the 5, so you know it's not the elementary divisor. So you must conclude it's the invariant factors, right? Hmm. Wrong. Remember, with the invariant factors, the biggest one should be a multiple of everything else. Well, that's not what happens here. 24, for instance, is not a multiple of 5. Uh, and quite, not just the biggest one, but each one has to divide the other one. So 5 doesn't divide into 24, so these aren't invariant factors either. So how would we be able to rewrite this so that we did have invariant factors? Well, a, a simple observation is that 24 and 5 are relatively prime. So we could just put those together. We could write this as C 24 times 5, which is C 120. And now we would have 60, 60, 120. 60 does divide 60. 60 divides 120. We win. So these must be the invariant factors. Uh, but what if we didn't notice that? Would there be a nice way of determining the invariant factors or the elementary divisors just by looking at the primes that are showing up? And the answer is going to be yes. 
what we do is we just start making a little list. I'm going to start with 60, and I'm going to write down its prime factorization. And I'm going to do it in a vertical way. So 60 is 2 squared times 3 times 5. All right, I have another 60. I'm just going to write over here 2 squared times 3 times 5. I have a 24, that's again going to be 2 squared, no, 2 cubed this time, times 3. And then I have a 5, and I'm just going to put that on the, the bottom there. There's a little empty spot. And now, if I circle these things vertically, I will get my invariant factors. 2 cubed times 3 times 5 is going to be 120. 2 squared times 3 times 5 is 60, and there's another copy of our 60. So immediately, I'm able to get all the invariant factors out. Furthermore, if I read these things horizontally, put some commas in here, I can get out all of the elementary divisors. The elementary divisors will be 2 cubed, 2 squared, 2 squared, 3, 3, 3, 5, 5, 5. So it's very, very easy, once you've written down the uh, invariant factors, you just write them down, say, in this way, you get the elementary divisors by moving left to right. Of course, on the other hand, if you knew the elementary divisors, you could write them down in this sort of way, and if you read down, you'd get the invariant factors. Let's see an example of that. Let's say I knew that my elementary divisors we're going to be, mm, let's see here, how about, uh, oops, let's go 2 squared, 2 squared, and 2 cubed, and we'll go 3, 3, 3, and then we'll have 5 and 5 squared. So these are my elementary divisors organized in this nice way. Then I can compute the invariant factors by multiplying vertically. So I'll get, let's see, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. So I'll get a C12. Uh, let's see, 4 times 3 is 12, times 5 is 60. So I'll get a C60. And the last one is going to be, well, let's see, there's going to be 100 times 6 would be 600. All right, and so these down here will be my invariant factors. And just as a check, we should look at the divisibility. 12 does divide 60, and 60 does divide 600. So it makes sense. These must be the invariant factors. And you need to check 600 times 60 times 12 must be 432,000. All right, so there is a very, very reasonable way to go between invariant factors and elementary divisors. Simply either write down the elementary divisors, all the primes of the, with the same prime uh, in the same rows, and just always push everything to the right, and then circle vertically to get your invariant factors. If you have your invariant factors, just write them down in this way, always pushing everything to the right if you have to, and read them across. You have all of your elementary divisors.